so this will probably be the last time we'll be seeing it because I just added a couple of hundred more parts to it. Where's my box? That's it. <laughs> That's my little box. Oh my god, it's still in one. It's still together. Oh, we gotta check this out. Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make aircraft using the new Airblades that we got in version 0 0.8. Uh, there has been a little bit of confusion with some people about how to how to make a stable craft, and I did have some issues myself, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you how to how to how to do it, the do's, and hopefully not the don'ts. So there are two ways you can do it. Uh, usually I try to take the, the generator with me, as you can see on the Dragonfly here. I got the, dra the generator in the back. The X-Wing has got the generator in the back as well. You can do that, but you do require more air blades because the generators do actually require, uh, uh, sorry, they do actually wait for a bit. I have made a little one over here that using batteries. I've been letting this charge for a little while, so we'll go take that one for a little spin afterwards. But let us begin. Uh, so the, few, the only real thing you need to worry about when building an aircraft is the same thing you uh, well, there's two things you got to worry about. Uh, one, you got to worry about weight, weight distribution as uh, with the floating foundations that we have. If you had too much weight in the back, then it would go nose up. If you had too much weight in the front, it would go, well, you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and start with this. Now I have done some weight testing of my own on this. Uh, apparently they're going to be adding this, the weight values into the game. Uh, my unit of measurement was the uh, little one by one blocks here. So this was like 17 blocks, this was 19 blocks. Uh, the batteries are a lot lighter, they're about what was it, one and a half blocks each, but you got to charge them. I like to go this way, one because I'm creative and two it's a lot easier. So weight distribution is definitely one thing. Uh, so if you look at the generator, the generator's center of mass would be right at that where 0% is. With the cockpit on there, it's not going to be right in the middle. It would technically still be more favoring the generator side. But with the amount of weight that we have here, we're actually going to need eight blades, so we won't worry about that. that. Uh, again, use, trying to build it as light as possible. Use uh, angled blocks or slopes if you can. And that will actually reduce the amount of weight and the amount of power that the air blades need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to place a couple of arms on either side like so. Uh, I know me worrying about weight is not, is kind of pointless when i got a, I'm going to call it a 90 block generator because it weighs the same as 90 blocks. Um... If you want to use biomass, it's probably not the smartest idea to go with it. You probably want to stick with batteries in that case, uh, just because the biomass generators, uh, I don't know what the power output is, but uh, you they're almost as heavy as these things, so you, oh, sorry about this, uh, so you would need more air blades to do it. Um, I've done it, built this thing so many times, so I know exactly what spacing I need. We go across here like so. Uh, there is one important thing I forgot to put on, but I'll do that after the air blades, and that is a new switch box that we need. Uh, personally, I like it. It's such a handy tool. It's an easy way to shut the system off completely. Oops. All right, so for this, I have tried with six without much luck. So for to have a uranium, uranium generator, uh, you will need to have eight, eight eight hover blades or air blades. Sorry, I call them hover blades because they had uh, key bindings in uh, the game at one point in time, and they called them hover blades, not air blades. All right. So now we just go ahead and stick our switchboard somewhere. Uh, try to keep it in the center. You don't want too much weight on one side and the other because then the craft starts leaning to one side, and when it leans, it's going to do the same thing like the hover pads, where it'll actually drift on you. Um, well, these these do have stabilization, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. So I'll go ahead and connect them all up, and then we'll configure them. Now, unfortunately, we don't have complete control of our actual flight directions. Like we don't, we don't have a. We can have a roll. We can have a pitch. We can have a yaw, but we can't have them all. And that's 
where it comes in. So I'm going to drop this down. So as you can see, it's back heavy. Not only that, but there's actually no block support there. So then we'll go up and we'll configure them. So now you got your stabilization. Turn that on or off. Uh, leave it on. It's always good to leave it on because, especially if you got an unbalanced weight. Uh, realistically, I should have a gap in here. Have these two at the end past the generator and these two in the front, just to make it more stable. Of course, wider stance would be better as well. And then. Uh, so yeah, there's that, uh, set to ground, it's set to hover. So basically they shut off when you get out and turn on when you get back in. Uh, it might be handy to have it set to grounded unless you need it to hover uh, if you're in survival just so you're not wasting fuel. And then of course you got your direction and your steering. So I'm going to go ahead and start this side. We'll get my direction going. Like so. Uh, there it does seem to be a speed cap of about 50-ish kilometers an hour. Uh, there are little tricks you can do to speed that up. Uh, I'll just get to that in a moment. So now we got to set up our steering. Now, I was talking about our different pitch yaw and roll. If I were to set everything going the same direction, like so, then when I go and lift up, I know it's kind of hard to see the arrows because I'm in the desert. But when I go up, you just use space to go up, control to go down. That's your your altitude. But now that i got my steering all set the same way, if I go and use it, I'm actually going to drift to one side instead of turning. So there's that. Now, if I want to actually turn, I want to have the steering in the back opposite the steering in the front. Or you could just use the steering in the front if you want, but I like to I like to turn on a dime. And I think I'm getting these backwards. Those ones stay, these ones these ones gotta go back, yes. Alright. So now when I turn left and right, and I turn left and right. We go forward and we go forward. Hold space, we go up. Uh, you will get a little bit of speed increase when you're going up at the hover mode, but there is a little workaround with that. What you do is, I guess it doesn't really matter which set you do, but take one of the pair in the middle and just turn stabilization off. It's going to be a little trickier to fly, but when you start going forward, you hold space and you actually do get a bit of a speed increase. As you can see, I'm doing about fluctuating between 60 and 80 because I'm bouncing like that. I have, oops, <laughs> yeah, never get out while you're still driving. Yeah, someone made a comment about that in the Steam discussions. Hit E while in the co cockpit and had, the mo uh, had what was a very bad flight experience. Anyways, so I'm going to turn these back on just because. And then there we have it. Now, again, you do want to keep these above the weight. Uh, I think it's the same with, like, I've done a lot of Kerbal Space Program. I, I think it was your lift was supposed to be above your mass. And it was supposed to be slightly in front or slightly behind. I'm not 100% sure. But as you can see, this thing needs eight, eight air blades to actually move around, carrying the generator around. And now we'll go over to the other one here. I just got four battery packs and a switchboard, and I've had them charging this whole time. And we'll just park this right over here. Now, if you were to turn stabilization off on the air blades, you will not get the hover. It, you'll, you'll probably get a pretty good speed, but as soon as you let go of that space bar, you're going to drop like a rock. So I'm just going to drop this down. Uh, like I so, and go run over to the little guy here. I wasn't really timing at how long these batteries charge, but it seems kind of seems kind of odd that the batteries would actually need charging and, and creative. All right, so I got four air blades, and up it goes. And same thing, moves around. I actually have my steering backwards, but that does not matter. And there we go. Uh, one more little note I have noticed, and we're going to do a little test here. I do have a beacon over here, but it seems to, 
the highest you can fly is 200 meters above sea level. So I got that beacon just below me, and we're going to do another test on this. Last time I did this, it was about, I think it said about 208 meters. I don't know what that, why that is. I don't know if it's got something to do with the atmosphere or if it's got something to do with the build height, for instance. I have someone t told me that you can't actually go out into space unless you're in a cockpit, so there's no point in jetpacking up there and creative. But let's see what we got here. I should start slowing down pretty quick. There we go. We've hit the cap, so it's about 230 meters, 235, because I'm in the desert, so I'm probably five meters or so above sea level. But anyways, that concludes our uh, aircraft tutorial. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, leave me a like, and uh, happy trails.